a situation that's very likely to prop up if you're dealing with a reactive dog, whether it be aggression or nervousness, is getting them walking on a loose lead. Because a dog that feels unsafe in its environment is very unlikely to walk perfectly on its lead all the time. They'll likely be looking around, they'll likely be pulling, freezing, because they feel unsafe in their environment. So what we've got to do is boost the confidence in three areas simultaneously in order to get them walking nicely on a loose lead. We've got to boost the confidence in us as their leaders, i decision makers. We decide where to go on the walk, we'll take care of danger. We've got to boost their confidence in their environment with other dogs, and then we've got to boost their confidence in what they should be doing, i walking nicely on a lead, not lunging or barking at other dogs. So the best place to teach him confidence in what he should be doing, and you as his leader, is in the home. Here, we can walk him up and down the house, we can change direction, we can change speed, and get him the habit of listening to us. Once he's got that here, we can then move forward to the garden and teach him the same responses. Then when he's got it in the garden, then we can come to an area like this. This is absolutely perfect because there's no dangers around whatsoever. However, unfortunately, life is not as easy as that. With my estate, it opens up a bit. As soon as I get out of the house, Dante starts getting a little bit nervous. And there's particular dogs that when he sees them, he'll bark and lunge. I'll have to correct him, move him back, wait for him to calm, and then move on again. And if I get the opportunity to be with that dog, I'll keep doing the lesson until I get him calm, and then I can move forward. But to boost this confidence in his environment, we've got to do it in such strict stages. So if we're here, for example, the lessons carry on. Go on, take him there. Good boy. This way. And he's in the wrong side, so I use my hand to get him in the right side. I turn around, show him that's a good thing, and then I might speed up and slow down. If he gets it right, good boy! And I can reward him with either food or praise. Good boy! If he gets it wrong, I correct him. I wait for him to calm, and then I move on again. He's a little bit reluctant to walk around that mud. Come on, come on, this way then, this way. We'll avoid the mud. And that's the intelligence of it. It's understanding, wait a minute, why are you moving in that moment? I could easily think, oh, he's not listening to me, but he's got a physiological need there. He goes, oh, I don't like that mud. So it's really understanding the need behind the behaviour. And that's what's really going to perfect this, when we can really understand why they're pulling. Uh, and once he's got it right here, we can go further afield to another stage. Another stage to work with your dog that could be up from the stage we were just at is an area where he's against the wall or a fence. Because if his view is opened up too much, he's got too much to concentrate on, too much to focus on, and that will raise his state and he won't be able to listen. So anytime you're by a wall, it's a great opportunity to kind of flank him between you and the wall. But he's seen something now. It's like, oh, I feel like I've got to deal with this. I'll take control straight away. No, don't worry about it. And then if I start speeding up and slowing down, I can see if he's listening. If he's not, then I know I'm going a little bit too far close to dangers without stronger foundation. So to keep his attention, it's just about doing that environment in stages. And I appreciate you might not have this on your doorstep, but when I was in London, I always managed to find areas where I break down stages and I go, okay, what is the least stressful environment around here? And can I get him walking on a loose lead next to me there? And if he could, that means he was relaxed. And if he was relaxed and calm and looking at me, then I'd go to the next stage. So against the wall here, What's he going to be like when it opens up? He starts pulling in front again because he feels like, okay, I've got to survey this whole area. Come on. Let's try that again. I wait for him to calm and then I move on again. Next up could be like an urban environment, which is just over there, but here it's enclosed. And whilst I'm here in an enclosed area, he's been exposed to the sounds and the sight, so we can see all the cars behind us, but we can teach him again to speed up and slow down and listen to us. Come on, Dante, good boy. And while you're here, you can practice. You see some bollards, you can practice your right turns and you can practice your left turns. Good boy, good boy. You can practice slowing down, speeding up. So there's all these little obstacles on your trip that you could use to reinforce that you're making the decisions of where you go and what speed you go. But one thing to remember is if your dog is pulling away from danger and you correct them and move them back and you put them in danger's way, the dog's actually going to get less confident in you as a leader because you're not being seen to be aware of what's scaring them. In those moments, you've got to choose either flight, get them out of the way from the problem, or freeze, be in front of them as the danger goes past. And that depends on their emotional state. That depends on how they're thinking and feeling in that moment. 
So for me, dog training, a lot of it is emotional intelligence. It's understanding how the dog's feeling. It's adapting the environment to make sure that you can teach them what they should be doing and show them that you'll protect them. And once they get it in that environment, you move forward and move forward and move forward. And a stage up would be a quiet town. It's quite quiet at the moment from COVID, but there's still more activity going on. So he's more likely to pull. Because he's in front now, he's seen a dog. He then stops listening. So I correct him, I bring him back. He's got, got some resistance there. I wait for him to calm and then I move on again. But it's a good little exercise. But you can see when a dog's around, he stops listening to me, especially a dog that's barking. Now, because that dog feels a little bit unsafe, that might make Dante feel unsafe. So that's when I'll get in front of him. So really the trick is knowing when to correct, when to get in front, when to walk away, how to teach in stages, how to boost his confidence in you as a leader by putting all this language in, how to boost his confidence in his environment by teaching him in strict stages, and how to boost his confidence in what he should be doing. So I hope you found that video useful. If you did, please press the like button and also subscribe to see future videos of how I get on with Dante. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you on the next video. Bye for now.